not your average tabletop. Woohoo! Welcome to Not Your Average Tabletop. I'm Zach. And I'm Pepper. And today we're going to do a chippy review of Horticulture, which is a game that was sent to us by Last Night Game, so take anything we say with a grain of salt. Uh, but yeah, we appreciate them sending us this game uh, to try out, and it is a uh, flip and write game. Uh, so yeah, um, take us away, Pepper. You want me to explain the game a little bit? You can explain yeah. the game a little yeah. bit. So this one... Uh, you have a grid board um, of spaces that you're going to be putting plants in there um, by flipping cards. And each round, um, you will flip two cards. The active player will flip two cards and choose one of them. And each one has two different plants on it, or possibly two of the same plant. Sometimes there's a wild plant symbol. Um, and then whichever card they choose for that round, everyone will have to draw those two plants in their garden. Um, and also at the beginning of the game, you kind of draw a path through your garden, um, all working together to do that, deciding each direction one at a time, and um, that'll split that up as well. Um, and then you're trying to score for getting a certain amount for each uh, type of plant, each type of vegetable or whatever has a certain amount, like the carrots need a group of three, and then you're going to score that many points, three points. Um, well, the berries need to get up to at least six um, to be able to score their six points. Mm -hmm. um, so then there's that, and then you also get to kind of choose uh, your... Uh, you get to choose four vegetables touching the edge of the board, touching <laughs> that path. And, for some extra scoring. Yep, and you get to choose which ones you get for that. Um, and for those core mechanics, I thought they worked really well. Mm -hmm. um, I guess getting into our chippy C scale. And chippy. The C and chippy. Um, core mechanics. I thought those were those were really nice, especially the the scoring of you can choose which ones you want to score for the edge of your board, which ones you want touching the path, and which ones you kind of want to pair together. I like that you can do that yourself. You get to change that every game, maybe go for something a little different, um, as well as just being able to... It's not really a polyomino game, but... Mm -hmm. It, it kind of gets that way near the end as you start filling in your board, mm -hmm. and I just love trying to work it out, especially when the board gets split by that path, um, and you just have a limited amount of spaces in here because the path will split up your groups, so if they're on opposite sides, they cannot score um, as one group, so you just really had to make the best with that space, creating your own polyomino shapes. Mm -hmm. um, I guess what does that give so you yeah, for a that score? That gives me an 8.25. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, yeah, as you talked about that a little bit more, maybe I would have bumped this up just a little bit. Uh, but I'm coming in with a 7.25, okay. uh, so still not bad. But yeah, the main thing that I had written down there as one of the best hooks, I think, for this one is that choosing kind of your, what you want to try to score that game. Uh, so you're always going to be trying to push for those specific types of plants. I find that to be really cool. Yeah. Um, I think the one, the last piece of the scoring is a... Um, it seems like it's best to kind of do something with a large number combined mm, yeah. with something with a smaller number. Yep, yep. It seems that way. I don't know for a fact yeah, that that's yeah. the best way to do it, but that's yep. kind of how it seemed as we've played yeah, it. Yeah, we have done that, and I think probably had the most success by doing it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but we have not played it the most amount of times, but yeah. Right. That. I do like that um, with those top ones touching the edge and touching the um, path, um, and also the bottom window where it's... Kind of if you can get one of each, if you don't want to write it on your board, you can write it in the bottom and each one can be used once there. And if you get the complete set, um, get just bonus. usually you get one for whatever one you have in there. But if you fill it up, you get another total six points. And um, I think there's options between that and kind of those mm -hmm. additional scoring uh, where at the end, if you have your sets complete, you can still do, do something with, with the... the the icons. Yeah, yeah. Now that you bring that up too, yeah, I'd probably bump it up to maybe a seven point five. But we'll just say, say I was at the seven point two five because that's how I have this kind of calculated. Yeah. But I could see that have to have increased mine a little bit. But yeah, kind of, otherwise, kind of the main mechanism is similar, sort of to a cartographer's. It yeah. makes me think of a little bit. But um, yeah. I do like the choice of being able to choose one or the other. Yeah. yeah. Well, unless you're me, you can go watch our playthrough of this. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple times where I did not have a choice <laughs> because I yeah. just got unlucky based yep. on the, yep. the draw of the cards 
That's just going to happen yeah. sometimes. And the gnome hat is really satisfying yeah. if you can um, double your scoring for some of those high point ones. I've been really successful with those. That is true. Uh, but otherwise, we get into history, and we've both played this one yep. four times. Yep. Um, so twice on the one side and twice on the other side. So the one side's kind of just um, kind of a blank slate, purely open, and the other one's got some rocks on it, which makes things a little bit more yeah. interesting when yeah. you're trying to uh, put together some of the big groups yeah, or even some of the small ones yeah. in certain areas. It yeah, and kind, kind of, of changes that. Yeah, especially with the gnome, it's very easy mm -hmm. with that and the path to um, block off some of those sides. Um, and then as well, kind of, yeah, trying to get that uh, third scoring objective, trying to place things next to particular things like trees, I think are definitely needed in this one mm -hmm. because you don't have to create a full set. Um, right. to score with that, but you would want to, and it gets really tight with those rocks. Yes, I would agree. Uh, then we get into investment, and for investment I'm coming in with a 7, uh, because uh, overall this game is very short and very snappy. I yes. think yeah, it says you can pretty much play with any number of people that you'd want. There's 10 pencils included in the game, so if you don't have extra pencils in the house, I guess... Uh, 10 wouldn't even technically be the max then either because you could pass it uh, amongst yourselves. But that's all done simultaneously, so it's not really going to make the game that much longer. It's just going to be as slow as the slowest person Yeah. in the yeah. group. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that, that, that part is really great, and the turns are snappy, and, yeah, it's over in almost no time. Uh, but I would also say that there's some things that maybe feel a little bit similar from game to game. Because uh, I feel like I'm trying to get at least one set of everything, if possible. Mm, yeah. um, but, yeah, I don't know, because yeah. especially for some of those bigger groups, I think yeah. it's going to be tough to try to get two ever of this, yeah. of, like, either the fives or sixes. Yeah, yeah and maybe and, you could get the fours. And, yeah, once, it, in a two-player game, at least, um, that's if true. one person's going for it, then they get to choose, they're going to try to get those cards when they right. get to choose on their turn. So you're going to be stuck taking them as well, which means that you're both probably, hopefully, going to get it. Right. Um, but with those wild options as well, that, um, that can it change it up a little bit. But I am, I, I have an 8 here as well. Um, okay. It, it probably would play pretty similar from game to game, but I think the mix-up in the scoring, um, they yeah. can choose, which is just different symbols. I mean, it's not, like, mm -hmm. mind-blowing or anything, but... I think that did differentiate our individual games and boards uh, yes. more than I thought it would. Yes, I 100% I agree that that part it also yeah keeps it a little bit fresh, and that's that's something that yeah I'm surprised more games don't do. I feel like, I feel like there are games that probably do do that where you can choose some things from the beginning. Mostly, probably you're usually probably doing cards and like oh yeah. you got a goal, yeah. but I mean this one felt different because you're yeah. actually drawing it in and choosing yourself you're not limited by even like cards like oh you're dealt three cards and you had to pick one and even mm -hmm. yeah. you get to just fully choose whatever you want which yeah feels really really cool yeah yeah um and then we've got presentation uh you can give your score first maybe i gave this one an eight um, mm -hmm. and it, there's not a lot to it. It is just cards, but they're very clear, um, well laid out. The icons are all easy to read when they're printed there. When I draw them, they're not as easy to read, but, mm -hmm. um, they, they're all clear what they are. Um, even a little bit of artwork on the cards as well. I always like that when it's not just a blank color background. They added a, mm -hmm. a little, uh, flair with the artwork and, I mean, the pencils work. I haven't had a problem with them. I mean, they <laughs> yep. could use the erasers. Um, there are no erasers on the pencils, but if you have one and mm -hmm. you do mess up or maybe draw badly like I do. Um, and like I did in it. the playthrough mm -hmm. multiple times. <laughs> After saying I wouldn't. Yes, after hyping up his <laughs> carrot, he drew the worst carrot of his life. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm coming in with a 7.25. I also think it's uh, really nice artwork on, yeah, not only the cards themselves, but also the sheet you're drawing oh, yeah, on. Yeah. The background is actually a really nice piece of art, and it, at the same time, does not distract or pull oh, away no, from you yeah. writing on it. Uh, so it's like, it just like met the perfect line of yes. yeah. being there and being nice when you're just looking at a blank sheet, but then also not getting in the way. Uh, yeah. I really liked that. Yeah. And then the card layout was really good. I would say the two 
symbols that I'd maybe have changed a little bit are the flower and the berries. Mm, yeah. um, those are a little similar, especially when you draw, like you said, yeah. like us. Yeah, when you draw, uh, I had a couple that were very close. <laughs> yeah. So outside of that, but that's a that's a personal problem. When you're actually looking at the cards, they're different because yeah. I think the berry one or like, we're saying berries. I yeah. think it's berries. It's yeah. great. It's something yeah. uh, are more of like a purple or yeah, blue, and blue, the flower yeah. is red. So I guess I don't know colorblind wise if those are two friendly colors or not uh but for me uh, i could tell them mm, apart yeah. obviously but yeah like you said on my personal sheet that i'd drawn <laughs> could be a different story yeah yep uh and then for preference so the second p in chippy uh i'm coming in with a 7.5 i think this one is for me for my verbin right games it feels like it's in the top half probably uh just because yeah it's got a few unique elements that make it feel a little bit different and you kind of brought up about the polyaminos it does feel like you're kind of creating your own polyaminos and like there'll be times where you're like okay well i need six of these and now i've like cut off part of this yeah. so now i have to use these last remaining spaces yeah. to fill that in and you're kind of trying to come up with okay and then i could use a three shape in here so you're kind of mentally thinking of polyamino shapes when you're drawing those so that is kind of a cool thing as well um so yeah it makes me probably want to take this one out uh, a decent amount because it's also short yeah um, yeah i'm trying to because i guess my biggest comparison would maybe be cartographers i'm trying to think how long cartographers usually is i think it's longer than yeah this. i think it's a bit longer yeah um but yeah. yeah i i think it's it's a solid one and i'm gonna hope to take it out um yeah, decently often. Yeah, I have an 8.5 for my <laughs> preference here. And I think it is, I've played just a few games that kind of have that mechanism where you're just filling in spaces. You have kind of, I guess you don't even have an amount that you're filling in here. You do it one by one. But mm -hmm. um, I don't know, just had to come up with a term for that because it's not polyomino, even though it feels like it. Um, just fill in this area. Domino. <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> games um i just i just really like that just trying to make the best with the space without having the restrictions of a set shape mm -hmm. um just really enjoyed that and like you said it's very quick you can easily play this i don't know if i really see us ever playing just one side of a sheet i'm guessing we'd mm -hmm. always just be like and let's do the other side quick mm -hmm. um great game for i that. i would agree yeah. and then yeah for it factor the second i um I came in with a 2.5. Uh, it's It's got a nice overall look, and it has a few different things that kind of make it stand out a little bit. But overall, I would say there's nothing to me that, like, really gives it that extra bit. Yeah. And, yeah, if you've never watched a Chippy review before, uh, this is kind of the smallest category. It's just kind of a way to potentially give something you really like a little bit of a bump. You can mm, give it yep. an easy 10 or something, but it's like a point. It's like 5% yeah. of the total mm, yeah. uh, net part but yeah I, I i think overall it's yeah nice looking got a few hooks but yeah nothing that really really sets it apart yeah yeah me. i have a four here i always have a hard time with it factor mm -hmm. and um it does have that like we've been talking about the whole game just kind of choosing your your objectives which is slightly different as well as the um building up the map and i think those are the things that are going to come to mind when i think of this and i think that will set it apart a little bit from other um verb and rights but um still it is a verb and right and it doesn't blow me away like oh this is like the most innovative game of the mm -hmm. year there's something just so different about this um so it, it still falls lower uh, on that scale to a four mm-hmm uh, which uh, comes in at a 6.33 for me. And with a, it, it sounds low, but if, uh, so the history part of this uh, goes for about 10% total. So at most we could get 10 plus place of so 10. Uh, so with a 0. 0.6, that would get it to about a 7 for well, me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, currently at a 6.33 with potential to probably grow. Yeah. I, I don't see kind of any of these scores going, feeling like they'd go down unless I maybe played it like, Oh, yeah. 20 times in a row and then maybe needed a break from it yeah but outside yeah. of that uh yeah I, I would say it's probably gonna end up around a seven yeah yeah i have it about around a seven i have a 7.15 and um, like you said with that history if that got up to a 10 which i'm, I'm pretty sure it's gonna mm -hmm. um I, I that'd be around a 7.5 um just a really solid addition to our 
um, verb and write game collection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and let us know in the comments below if you'd like to see a top 10 Ooh, verb and yes. write games. That's one that, it, whether or not anyone actually wants that in the comments <laughs> below, I think we're going to do at yeah. some point here uh, because uh, we have a lot of really good ones. So, yes. and yeah, this one will probably be making some appearances on that, yeah, I yeah. would guess. So, yeah, but otherwise, thanks again to Last Night Games for sending us a copy to look at and review. And, uh, yeah, if you've got any questions on the game, uh, ask them below. But otherwise, we hope to see you on our other videos. And as always, don't forget to keep on nibbling on our content.